Hey everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in today's AMA session. It has been some time since the last one and we look forward to having more of these. It's just that Dapers and myself have been immensely occupied uh, with all of the building and you know, especially launching GitHub Abyss. We're super excited to see uh, the early access version being well received, you know, people playing with their fellow friends, uh, families coming together, playing the game. And uh, it's nice to see uh, the different aspects of the uh, ecosystem kind of integrating with each other. So yes, our initial launch, the, the, the kind of early access has been uh, well received. It's a success. We will continue to build regardless of market conditions. It's what we stand for, our passion. Let's just take a very quick look once again at the Tipsy Company and the relationship uh, with the different aspects of the ecosystem. So this is the Tipsyverse ecosystem. Once again, Tipsy Coin is our only governance token. It will be super valuable, it's limited in supply. And within this ecosystem, we have other categories. So we have games. We had Tipsyverse 1.0. It's no longer in the list here because that's just uh, there was an interim uh, digital realm that we created for people to kind of play and vibe in while waiting for our Gate of Abyss. And uh, Gate of Abyss, you know, as, as we all know, it's, it's now available on Play Store. It's available for iOS users as well through test flight. Now, we are also looking at other future games. So there's some interesting stuff in the pipeline. As for assets, we have NFTs, things like Genesis Penguins or Land, if you desire to mint them as NFTs. Uh, we also have Jin, which is uh, the premium game currency for all of our games. And uh, we have um, apps. So we have the Tipsy app where you can stake Tipsy for Jin. We have the Goa app. We've done you know, several rounds of um, UX, UI updates. So feel free, you know, toy around, explore being able to convert your Jin from the blockchain to the game, uh, explore organizing your land collections and, and just really being immersed in, in this journey with us. We are also looking at additional marketplaces. So today we'll be going through the questions uh, in no specific order because we have grouped them in, in categories. Uh, Deporus, my co-founder, will start. He will cover the game aspects first and I'll be following up after that. Uh, note that we will not be addressing all of the questions asked because some of them have already been answered to either by other members or by the mods and uh, we will just deep dive into the more relevant ones to keep this uh, session sweet and, and concise for all to follow through. So thank you, over to you Dapers, and um, I'll catch all of you again in some moments. Okay, thank you for the Uh Right now, let's talk about GOA. Let's talk in depth about uh, the game. So there are a couple of questions that we have uh, regarding GOA. So let me just start with the first. Uh, the question is, do we have class advancement in GOA? And there's another question which is similar. Would there be the possibility to change classes or to try other classes? So the answer is yes. There will be class advancement in GOA. The game prim primarily has three different category of classes. Uh, we have the destroyer, the vanguard, and the protector. In other words, the destroyer, they are the, the magic base class. Vanguard, Vanguard is the um, the thief or the rogue base class. And there's the protector, which is the warrior or the strength base class. Let's say you start as a mage. And when you reach a certain level, you can progress to become, say, an arch, arch mage. And then once you reach a certain level, you become a sorcerer, you become a mystic, right? At one point, you will be given a choice. Whether do you want to move to another branch or do you want to stick with your current branch? So for example, you are a mystic at this particular level. Once you reach a certain level, you are given the option to become a druid. A druid stays within the magic class or you can choose to switch over to a protector class. You can become a paladin. So it really depends on how you want to play the game, how you want to progress. This path that you, you choose to take will bring you to different classes and will allow you to try different type of um, classes, right? You, from a magic-based class, you can move over to, say, 
a protector based class at any point in time as long as you reach a certain level and as long as the option is available for you. The next question is, will there be a way to speed up or disable better animation to do auto fighting? So this is something that we are still looking into it. We are currently prioritizing features in the order of importance. So personally, I, I do not wish to turn this into an either game. An either game is a game whereby, you know, you just leave it on the table and do nothing. Uh, this is not our plan. We want players to engage with the game. So you see, part of gaming is to enjoy the experience, to enjoy, you know, the animation, the graphic and the choices that you make. So, yeah, so there's the there's something that uh, we are still looking into. The next question is, what do you gain by leveling up? So you what you gain is you, you get uh, stronger stats as you level up. You are also able to see uh, stronger mobs. So say you are level 10, you will be able to start seeing monsters at your level or a little bit higher. Another advantage is that your penguin or your companion, uh, the stats of your companion scale together with you. So these are some of the benefits of uh, you leveling up. What is the difference between a 3x monster and a 1x monster. I think it's asking what is the difference in fighting a combat with three monsters versus one monsters, uh, one monster. So at the moment there are no difference in terms of the experience and the reward that you obtain. Uh, but in the future updates, what we're gonna do is the more monsters that you kill in a particular in a single combat. Uh, that will reward you with more drops and more experience points. So I think this is something that is fair. Uh, so yeah, that's something that we're going to implement in the future. Another question is, I would like to try other classes. How do I do that? Will all classes become available or would they, would they be unlockable? So I think I mentioned earlier about choosing a path. So as you level up, you will have to pick a path you know, you have to choose a class to progress into. So our class system is designed in a way where it doesn't really trap you in a certain, in a specific route. So for example, if you choose to be a thief, you have the opportunity to progress into a magic route or something like a warrior route. The next question, can, I, can someone change their username in GOA app on Android? So right now, you can log into the game using either your um, username or your email address. Your username at this point in time is your in-game name. So what we're going to do in the future is we're going to introduce um, in-game display name. So the difference between in-game display name versus username is that username is private and it will be only be used for logging in. Whereas your display name is your in-game character name where it will be shown publicly inside the game. So yes, you can change your in-game display name once it's implemented. How do I increase vision in the world map? So I think it's asking, uh, is, that, is it possible for me to increase my field of view in the world map so that I can see uh, more point of interest. I can see more monsters, you know, more than the radius that was defined. So yes, you can do that. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce items that will increase your field of view. So if you take or use an item, maybe for the next 30 minutes or one hour, your view, your, your vision or your field of view will increase from 400 meter to 600 meter, for example. So this is great because it allows you to interact with more in point, points of interest, uh, allow you to fight more mobs uh, within a, a, in a v bigger vicinity while staying stationary. Okay, the next category I'm going to go into right now is we're going to talk about buildings. We're going to talk about shops. We're going to talk about things that's related to land. First question, 
In GOA, can players buy and sell buildings in Marketplace? Can players teleport to their land plots that are outside their country and place pre-built buildings or bring supplies to, to build buildings? Um, so the answer is no. There are no plans to allow buying and selling of buildings in marketplaces. In the near future, you can only buy and sell land plots on our GOA app. Right now, in order to sell, to buy and sell land plots, you need to go to OpenSea. That's where you can buy your penguins, uh, Genesis penguin. That, that's where you can buy and sell uh, land plots. If you are a landowner, it is not possible to teleport to your land at the moment. But we have plans to expand on the land use cases uh, in the near future. So, so please stay tuned. The next question is, imagine a very popular land where everyone want, wants to uh, plot a shop, to build a shop. This will just end in a mess. Do you plan to limit the number of shops per square meter or per land? Do you plan uh, to require upkeeping or to maintain shops in order for them to stay in place? If yes, how much and what is the frequency? Uh, yes, this is something that we did consider. We're in the midst of deciding the limits. However, we do not have plans for players to maintain their shop. So once the building has been introduced, sorry, once buildings has, have been introduced, we want to encourage more players to build buildings. Having the need to maintain or to upkeep buildings might discourage uh, players, you know, building more buildings. So... But I guess this is a good idea. You know, if things are getting out of hand, we can always look into implementing something like that. So yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Will I earn more crypto on each transaction if I create a shop on unpurchased land? If not, can you please adjust the percentage so that we can earn more until someone decides to purchase that land? All right, so you earn the same amount of gin regardless of whether it, if it's a purchased or unpurchased land. The only thing that determines how much you earn is the number of transaction and the size of transaction, right? So the more transaction taking place and the bigger the, 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 the amount uh, for the transaction, it contributes to the amount that you earn as a landowner. Next, I saw that players can declare a hometown. Is that, is that hometown tied to the real life city or town that they live in? Or is it tied to the specific plot of land? For example, can you declare the entirety of Los Angeles and make uh, as, your, as your hometown? Or just one specific plot within LA is your hometown, if that makes sense. Um, so hometown is not yet a feature in the game. Uh, I mean, I'm happy that you 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 brought this up because hometown is something that we spoke about in a few in the past. Uh, we tease about hometown. We tease the possibility of having hometown in the game. So the plan is that we want to allow players to set their hometown anywhere in the world, as long as they are physically present at that location. Right. If you're there, you can set it as your hometown. And then you can set only one hometown at any one point. If you want to change hometown, you can do that. But there are some penalty and there are some uh, rules involved in doing so. So what is the point of hometown? There are benefits of home uh, to, to having hometown. And where you set your hometown does matter. However, this is something that we will review in the future and not at this stage. All right, the next question is, will there be more, sorry, will there be player-to-player -player trading? And then another question, why mobile games doesn't, well, I think the question meant why GOA doesn't have private trading. So we do not plan to allow trading for now because by allowing trading, it will be very difficult to manage the game uh, economy. However, player can trade NFT such as the Genesis Penguin, which are your companions, and land plots, uh, 
at this point in time. In the future, we're going to introduce premium weapons and premium gears, which means they are like the in-game weapons and the gears that you get in the game. The only difference is they are NFTs. Right, so there will be a set of weapons and gears that we call them premium NFTs. Oh, sorry, premium weapons, premium gears. These are items that can be sold uh, in the marketplace, where uh, which which kind of allow you to trade with other players. I hope that answers your question. The next question is: Will there be a player marketplace or auction house? So at the moment, player can only buy and sell and trade Genesis Penguin and Land Plots in OpenSea. Will we be able to sell in-game stuff uh, in player shops for Jin? So this is something that uh, still in KIV, we, we still uh, KIV. We do not have an answer for this. This is something that we are still in the midst of discussion. Uh, but it's not a bad idea, you know. We we just have to consider some other factors of doing something like that, and the complexity of doing something like that. So this is something that uh, we will probably address in the near future. So please stay tuned. All right, let's talk about the next category, which is guilds and party systems. So is there going to be a guild system in the game? And another question is, what does the end result of guild looks like? Does it look like a giant raid like in World of Warcraft? Or does it look like everyone getting to attack a boss individually? So at this point, uh, I'm afraid I there's, isn't, there isn't a lot of things I can share about the guild system. Uh, because we want to preserve an element of suspense and an element of surprise. But players will be able to create guild or to join an existing guild. Guilds can take place, sorry, guilds can take part in activities like closing of portal. Uh, they can take part in dungeon and also kingdom war. So this is something that we have a vision of uh, implementing, uh, particularly kingdom war, which is something that is pretty interesting. So at this point in time, uh, there isn't much I can review about Kingdom War. But yes, there will be a guild system in the game. And yes, guild system allows you to take part in activities like, like portal closing and dungeon and, and Kingdom War. So will there be guilds with all our friends and potentially account integration with social media accounts such as Facebook and Instagram. I know some apps do that for creating accounts and connecting with friends. Wasn't sure if this is a possibility. So I think what you are referring to is, is uh, you're referring to a friend system where once you connect to your social media account, it will display whoever that plays Gate of Abyss in your social media friends list. Uh, so this is a pretty common feature in a lot of games. We are prioritizing feature uh, that is more important, as I said before. So unfortunately, it's something that we think is not as important and it doesn't take away the main element of the game. So yeah, this is something in the pipeline. It's just that it will not be in the next release. So the next question is, can we form parties with our friends? Like, going for a walk together at the same location and fight every battle together. So our vision for the party system is to allow players in the same location to play together. What, what I meant is when you play together, once you join the same party, you're able to see the same mobs. You're able to join the same battle and you can fight together you know, as a party. And then whatever experience point that you gain, whatever items that you obtain, can be shared in the party. Will guild members be able to teleport to another guild member? For example, if there was a regional portal and a guild member alerts the guild, all the members can portal to him and help him close the portal. So the, the short answer is yes. This is something that we have in mind almost exactly like how you describe it. So do stay tuned for more information about guilds and party. Uh, 
Next, let's talk about everyone's favorite, portals. If a, if a world portal or a regional portal is defeated or, close, or closes, will another portal respawn in the same location? Or do they randomly appear somewhere else? So at the moment, portals will respawn at the same place all the time. However, we have plans to make it spawn somewhere else within the city uh, in the future updates. What is the spawn rate on portals? There are a few closed right now, and I've been checking to see if a new one spawned yet. I don't want to miss out, thanks. So, after using a key to open a portal, the portal will stay on for 24 hours. Right, so within 24 hours, if you don't close it, um, the, the portal will close, and then, you know, you, another person or, or yourself can open the portal again using a portal key. The next question is, do you still get something even if the portal boss doesn't get killed at the end of the countdown? Even if you, even if you were the one who unlocked the portal. Uh, da, 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 sorry, I would like to know the outcome before I start assuming that it, get, it got bugged out on me. So... No one gets anything if if everyone fails to close the portal. So in in other words, if the portal doesn't get closed, no one gets anything. Even if you open the portal, even if you deal the most damage, it doesn't matter because no because it is essentially the the portal isn't closed. The reaper is still alive, so nobody get any form of reward was okay then the next question is is the portal boss reward fixed so the reward is not fixed however the rarity uh is fixed so for example the person that dealt the highest damage will get one god tier gear it's the same every time but the item is different it could be a weapon it could be a gear it could be a headgear, a body gear, you know. It changes all the time. But what is guaranteed to be the same is that the rarity is the same. If you if the, the person that dealt the higher damage will the highest damage will get one god tier gear. So when you go to a portal and you click on it, you're able to see the the reward list. You are able to see if you dealt the most damage how many god tier item you'll be able to get and how many um, potion you're going to get etc and then the next person the, the next person in line will be able to get one legendary item the third person as well so on and so forth so you can refer to that to know that what are the gears the rarity of gear that you're going to get now that i've gone through the portals uh, the portal system, the guild system, you know, about buildings, about land, about shops, about classes. Uh, I'm going to address a few general questions that, uh, you know, our committee members have. So, the first question is, will a game wiki be used as the reference book for gameplay and storyline? So, yes, uh, we'll be using wiki gateofabyss.com for this purpose. Will there be a data wipe after early access? So uh, at the moment, we, we, we are trying our best not to have, uh, we, we're trying our best to avoid a server reset. However, I cannot guarantee that for now. But in the event that we need to do a server reset due to any reasons, like we are doing some major balancing to the game mechanics, if that's the case, we will find ways to to compensate uh, players who, who spend a lot of time playing GOA. So I do not have an answer for this at the moment. Uh, we, if there's a need to to do a server server wide reset, um, please be please rest assured that we will try to make it uh, as fair as possible. In GOA, can we establish 
home to any plot we own. Teleport for free and have unlimited play time at that home regardless of our physical location. For example, I own a plot of land in Santa Monica Pier, but I do not live there. I would very much like to play or to build there. So I think that is a good idea, uh, which we will keep in mind. However, we have this we have this feature called the hometown feature, as I mentioned earlier. And hometown is open for every single player in the game, uh, not just limited to landowner. But what you mentioned is is a good idea. We will keep that in mind. It will be something that we will we will consider with the team. Would there be more backstory for the game about portals, about alliance, and about I think the game in general? So yes, we'll be introducing more story element into the game by adding quests, by adding NPCs, right? Which will which will take the role of sharing about uh, the backstory of the game. Um, when we design the game from scratch, we design it by creating a backstory and a law for the game first. However, because we want to focus on building the game mechanics, so that's the reason why at the moment you do not see a lot uh, of, of information about the, the backstory of the game. So once we start introducing NPCs and, and, and quests, specific quests, you know, we are able to introduce this element into the game. The next question is, what do you plan to do about players who will abuse the game to relocate themselves everywhere? Um, so the thing is, our stand is we do not tolerate hackers and we do not tolerate anyone looking to exploit the game, especially those that spoof the game uh, GPS, you know. So our stand is any player who violate the terms and conditions of the game will be banned and they will be banned for life. Is there any progress on the possibility of sponsored in game events so i do not have any information on on this at the moment i live in france if the game is released here great but what if i travel to another country do that country have to be eligible to play or will it work anyway so the eligibility to play is only determined by whether you can download the game in your home country or not so for example i'm in singapore the game is available in Singapore Play Store. So once I download it, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I can travel to Japan, to China, to US, to Australia. It doesn't matter, right? You are able to load a game and you're able to play in whichever location you are at. When I open up the app, I need to log in. Can I use my account with which I bought my LAN plots? Uh, the answer is yes. The login database for the game and GOA app, which is app.gateofabyss.com, they are synced, synchronized. So the answer is yes, both of them are the same. How big is the inventory in the game? At the moment, there are no limits to the inventory at the mo uh, inside the game. Okay, what are the phone system requirements for Android phone? Any devices with a minimum of a full HD screen uh, is recommended. So in fact, I think most phones out there right now are full HD anyway. So it, it covers a very big percentage of uh, mobile phones out there. So most of the time, this is not a concern for uh, a huge percentage of people. Do pets or do companions have a fixed or random base stats? So companions have a fixed base stats, but their stats scale according to the player. Your level and your gear determines and affect the companion stats. So for example, the uh, this particular companion have a base stat of 10 strength, right? If the player strength increases and you equip certain gear that increases your strength, that will help to scale 
the companion strength set as well. When is the next update? So we are constantly updating and fixing bugs. However, the next big update will likely to be in a couple of months. Are there plans to have a browser or window app version of GOA? So there are no plans for that at the moment because this game requires GPS and and the reason is because this is a location-based game. So we have we don't do not have plans of doing that at the moment. How satisfied is the team with the current build of GOA? So the team are very happy with the game. We feel that this game in its in terms of its design, uh the game style and the mechanics, all of us feel that there is a lot of potential for this game to grow. It is something that is unique that you do not see uh, often in, in Play Store. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting in terms of um, you know how, how the game is designed. So yeah, I would say that the team is very satisfied with the game. So what is one thing you are most proud of with GOA? Um, so I suppose this question is directed to myself and uh, Forever Tipsy. Um, to be able to see this game turn from uh, to, to build from scratch and then now seeing it coming into reality and you can actually download and play the game, you know, that to me is an uh, accomplishment. And uh, we are also very proud that we are very quick to adapt our adaptability. Um, you know, in many months back, uh, we we wanted to build GOA, and then we decided to build the game with with an agency uh, in Vietnam, and then they didn't do a good job. In fact, the game that we were given is not up to our standard. So at that point in time, we were given a few options, right? Do we still bite the bullet and continue with the development of the game? Or should we move on to something else? Or should we redo the game and build our own team? I think because of our commitment to our community and of course to the game and our passion in seeing this coming into reality, uh, we decided to take the third option, which is we build the game with another team, uh, with with our own internal team, right? So, in terms of let's talk about our adaptability, we managed to within a couple of months form a team, a very competent team, in fact, and then we are able to take some of the elements that we have from the previous studio, and then we managed to build GOA in a couple of months from from something that is uh. That, that is poorly done, right? We took whatever that, is, that, that we can salvage and then we built a game, I would say almost from scratch with this new team. So we, I, I feel that we are very fast to adapt to circumstances that happen, you know? So this is something that we are, me and Tipsy are very proud of. I have for the first time walked with the game through my village and it's very accurate one loop around the portal sitting over the village center but what game element are coming to benefit moving in pokemon go you have egg hatching and pokestop with their drops currently there are no reason to leave the house um okay i think what you're asking is that, that you know goa doesn't require you to move as much as Pokemon Go. Um, yeah, I, I do agree 100%. So unlike Pokemon Go, we deliberately designed the game to be playable without the need to leave the house. Uh, but of course, if the player decide to leave the house uh, to play the game while traveling around, they will be rewarded even more. Yeah, I, I hope that answers uh, your question and I hope this answer all of the questions that you guys have in regards to uh, Gate of Abyss. Uh, yep, I guess uh, enough of me talking. I will hand my time over to Forever Tipsy. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Daperus. 
And uh, now I'd like to cover questions relating to land or Goa land, you know, our virtual real estate. So question is, I don't want to make anyone upset, but as we pay the mint of lands, why don't we get a 5% price, uh, the, the resale? I think referring to secondary market transactions. So the answer to this is uh, the 5% royalties, they're basically nominal sums. It goes back to the company. As you know, we have extremely high costs in terms of building the game, you know, all the blockchain elements, uh, as well as ongoing server costs, uh, maintenance, and we have a um, pretty impressive team around the world that keeps everything working. So next question is our thoughts on OpenSea's removal for mandatory creator fees. Um, the answer is, well, that's OpenSea's policies, we respect it. We are neutral towards the decision. Next question, what is the landlord percentage of income on a single, or rather on a sale transaction of uh, the land? Uh, basically asking for, for details of the percentage. Um, so the answer is we have not yet revealed this. Stay tuned for future updates. Uh, however, we are looking to have this transaction percentage being higher for a start. And as the game grows in popularity and there are more players, we will begin to kind of normalize this percentage so we can balance the mechanics of, of the gin. It's all about balancing demand versus supply. Next question is about the land rating and land analysis. When will they be populated? And will the data from beta be used for initial, initial ratings and then updated real time from gameplay? So the answer is you'll see land ratings in future iterations of the game. Uh, as of now, we are still in the early access version of uh, Get Up Abyss. So we are focused on analyzing data and enhancing the gameplay experience. And once we've analyzed or rather addressed this round of initial feedback, you know, it's bugs, feature updates and so on, we will catapult our marketing campaigns. And that's when landowners can be able to enjoy the full benefits of their land. Things like earning the income of transactions. Uh, next question about landowners uh, creating a Discord status for, for them. Uh, the answer is there are no plans for this for now, uh, just because not all land plots are NFTs. It's purely the choice of the landowner if they want to mint it. So, yeah, I think we'll keep the roles that we have now, but we can look at it in future. Uh, question about the land through the Goa app. Um, yes, we, we have said in the past that NFTs would be usable in all future games. So the question here is basically uh, kind of how would this work? Because uh, the land uh, refers largely to, to Gate of Abyss, you know, based on the game map being one to one of Earth. Um, and uh, the question also asks about how this land will be integrated into future games. Um, things like, you know, the Unreal Engine one in Tipsyverse 2.0, for example. So the answer to all of these questions are each game will introduce land in different aspects. There'll be different mechanics for it. Um, games that we launch are likely to have varied gaming styles and graphics um, because we'd like to offer an array of diverse experiences for all groups of players, all types of players. And our next game though, that is not a PC one. Uh, that's some time away, um, but we have other interesting stuff in the works. So I can't wait to share more of those uh, at a later time. And next question around GOA's launch, could there be another time period for land discounts? Uh, well, the, the, uh, early access is now launched. So um, we can, however, look to introduce time limited discounts uh, for land uh, to celebrate this early access launch. Um, stay tuned for some more information. Um, next question, will there be a, a when will be a function to use the lands bot, you know, and, and when can this be used in game and so on? Um, because the user does not think the accounts are linked. So the answer is the accounts are all linked on the back end. When you create an account uh, in game, it kind of you know connects to the same database as the account on your Goa app. So you can log in um, kind of on both platforms using the same credentials. Um, but speaking of how the land comes into the game, so yes, the game world map is the place we, we know of, we live in, right? Which is our very earth. And at the moment, landowners, they get increased drop rates. Uh, and in future releases of the game, you know, the landowners will get a percentage of in-game transactions that take place on their plots. Um, so we, we have seen questions whereby, you know, why can't we dissect the game map within the game and, and kind of illustrate the different land plots. And the reason we don't do that is because we don't want to have the map too cluttered with all the line breaks. You know, it will detract from the gaming experience um, Gate of Abyss already has 
you know, a bunch of uh, different features with, with the monsters. We have characters because you can see nearby players and so on. And as we introduce buildings, uh, the map will just get more crowded. So we need to, you know, take all these into consideration. Uh, next question, when will land plot integration begin? Uh, answer is we don't have a timeline on this yet since we are gradually looking to introduce buildings and shops in subsequent versions of the game. And gin revenue for landowners will be introduced at the right time. Now let's look at questions um, pertaining to Genesis penguins. So someone asked, the penguins are awesome and many of the individual portraits are really cool, or rather traits, I think. Um, and in game, however, you know, the, the penguins look homogeneous uh, to their rarity class. So will they at some point look um, exactly like their NFTs within the game? The answer is yes, this is a possibility, but uh, it's not a priority for now. I mean, there are a lot of design elements to work on those because each NFT is super unique. So the priority at the moment is to focus on the gameplay experience for all players, uh, even those um, without penguins. I mean, we want them to have equal fun in the game, right? Uh, so we are looking to launch other games in future as well, and um, penguins will have utility in all of these games. Um, they are our flagship NFT collection. So, you know, in, in each game, however, there'll be different gaming styles. How the penguins are displayed in game can vary from game to game. Um, but it's very likely that penguins will look homogeneous to their rarity class. So all commons look a certain way, all rares look a certain way, uh, and so on. So having the same uh, base model basically allows us to dedicate our resources to enhance gaming experiences instead. Um, what can we tell us, or rather, what can yeah, what can we tell you about auto farming, and does it include Opus penguins? Uh, the answer is yes, auto farming actually has already kicked in. I think our Genesis penguins will testify to this and I see people having a lot of fun with that. Great job. Um, we have not yet introduced Opus penguins yet, so let's keep it as a surprise until then. Um, but as I said, you know, penguins always have a special place in our ecosystem. Next question, will the marketplace rent uh, penguins that are owned by tipsy viewers and or holders? So as of now, we don't have this feature planned. Um, but we can look into it in the future. The priority is always to ensure the security of our users and their assets. So when we decide to implement a feature, um, we have had a lot of thought around it. Um, next question, which differences will there be between the Genesis penguins, their rarities, and um, comparing with other pets, I guess companions in this context, uh, regarding you know, loot and battle support, and will Genesis Penguins be able to join PvP, which is player versus player, as a game mode? Uh, answer is, Genesis Penguins, they are our premium companions. Um, rarer ones will be more powerful, as uh, you would have noticed. And our game caters for traditional players as well, so players who have no knowledge uh, of the blockchain, and that's what NFT, or rather, that's what non-NFT companions are really for. So just like in existing battles, you know, Genesis Penguins can be involved in PvP fights when we roll out the PvP feature. And as part of our future upgrades, we can look into these penguins having a wider array of spells and skills to cast. Um, however, note that uh, it's only Genesis Penguins that can auto farm. Um, as for Opus Penguins, we have not revealed some cute secrets about those guys, so stay tuned. Next question, how do the penguins level up? Um, and the answer is for a start, they follow the levels of the players. So they follow the level of your character in game. And as the months progress, uh, the increased utility of penguins will be evident because they can be used in a suite of games that we launch. Um, next question, are GPs working out as planned? Seems like good gears are better than good penguins. So let's look at it as, you know, this is an RPG game. Uh, and good gear would go hand in hand with penguins. Uh, they all work in different ways. They all have their own purpose. And also we are not a pay to win game. So we don't want to largely kind of discriminate against players who don't have penguins, right? Um, so for now, uh, the uh, penguins scale with players level, like I mentioned earlier. So your, your potential, you know, in, um, in looking at these penguins uh, it will really shine in later stages of the game because as you scale up in level, your penguins will as well. And penguins can help you auto farm. Gears can't do that. I mean, maybe they can if you drink enough. Um, next question, will there be dashboards to show us how much reward our penguins or land plots have brought in? 
especially once there is more than one game? Uh, the answer is likely yes. Um, we are always looking to enhance the experience of our web apps for our users. Um, however, when this feature will be introduced, I mean, we don't have a timeline for that. We are working on uh, various uh, kind of verticals all at the same time. Now let's go into questions for Tipsy Coin. Uh, could we have additional staking tiers for Tipsy? You know, for example, 1 billion, 600 million, 10 million, etc. Um, and I also noticed there's been one or two other questions asked similar around these uh, you know, for staking tiers. So the answer is um, our approach is to simplify where possible, right? We have many aspects here of our ecosystem. Uh, and more importantly, uh, security is a primary consideration in all of our smart contracts. So if we have the option to reduce the um, number of variables for our smart contract logic, which is what we did you know, as, as part of our um, coding, there are less loopholes as a result uh, for exploitations and uh, security compromises. So of course, in an ideal, ideal world, um, we would want to have an infinite number of staking tiers, right? With the, you know, the flexibility of users being able to stake any amount of tipsy they want, but we have decided to keep the staking options as three tiers after considering all the pros versus cons. So like I said, you know, on our back end smart contracts, um, uh, the, the gin is kind of hard coded. It's, it's kind of calculated on a per second basis for each of the tiers. Um, having said all of this, we can look into additional tiers in future. It's a possibility. Next question, will there be a 10% sell tax when transferring Tipsy from um, one chain to another? I mean, in this case, the BNB to the ETH chain, right? Uh, will there be other fees or taxes involved? The answer is no. There are no sell taxes when transferring your Tipsy. Um, I, I mean, in this case, I'd call it a transfer tax. No, it does not exist. Just like, you know, as of now, Tipsy has no transfer tax when you move it from one wallet to another. Um, our Tipsy bridge that's being built for both Jin and Tipsy, uh, that is currently under development. So look out for more information in time to come. The first part of the bridge will allow Jin to be transferred to and fro the Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum main network. And subsequently, the bridge will be rolled out to Tipsy coin. All right. So we are using Gelato's relay network. I've mentioned in the past that you know we are literally one of the first few around the world to be using this new technology, we want to ensure that we have sufficient testing in place before we deploy. You know, we always bear around about security. Next question, will reflections continue once we can bridge Tipsy to ETH? Uh, so the answer is we are still studying the feasibility of that. Uh, at the moment, the Tipsy bridge will be rolled out for Jin first, since we want to ensure the stability and the success of this bridge for Jin before adapting it towards Tipsy. So we will do the feasibility studies for this when we are working on the Tipsy bridge for Tipsy coin. At the moment, we are kind of in the you know um, final stages uh, of the Tipsy bridge for Jin. So you can use Jin on both the Binance Smart Chain and the Ethereum main networks, as well as being able to use your Jin in the Gate of Abyss through the GoI app. Next question: Will and when will we be going ahead with listings on exchanges such as Binance? Answer is we will at the right time. Uh, next question, Tipsy, is it gonna be listed on Uniswap? And um, you know, BNB ETH available, I guess, referring to the trading pairs in this case. The answer is Tipsy coin will be on Uniswap, um, which is a decentralized exchange. And this will happen once Tipsy is launched on the ETH mainnet. We'll deploy the liquidity pool of Tipsy coin um, with ETH, right? In, in the in, since this is the ETH mainnet. Um, next question, will Tipsy or Jin ever be an option to directly purchase penguins or lamb? So the answer is, there are plans for Tipsy coin to be a payment option in our marketplace in future. Um, likely once it's launched on the ETH mainnet, so we have to wait for the bridge for that. And the reason is, um, you know, our NFTs are on the ETH mainnet, so we want this to be a more seamless experience for our holders. Next question, any projection when Tipsy will go on Ethereum? The answer is once our Tipsy bridge is ready for Jin, we'll then adapt it for Tipsy coin, and then we'll be ready to launch on Ethereum. So no timelines yet for this. Um, we don't want to rush development, you know, especially when it involves smart contracts. Uh, and a lot of our features are pretty groundbreaking. You know, it's not like we're using existing technology, um, rather existing bridges and just uh, kind of 
uh, copy and uh, pasting, you know, their, their smart contracts, their codes. We literally code everything from scratch, right? It's, it's a lot of innovation that happens here. Now I will cover questions on Jin. Um, so within the tokenomics of the system, will there come a time that in-game Jin can be used to acquire unclaimed land plots? So I think to rephrase this is basically, can we use Jin to buy land or so on? Uh, answer is no, it's more likely for Tipsy to be used as a payment system for our uh, NFTs and other digital assets that we offer in our marketplace in future. So yes, we are still um, upgrading our existing Goa app marketplace. Um, we are also going to be working on additional marketplaces for other games. And we want all of this to be one big, massive gaming universe. Next question, will we be able to sell Bata gift gin to other players? So three aspects, will we be able to sell gin, Bata or gift it to other players? So you can sell it uh, once you bridge gin from the game to the blockchain, you'll be able to sell it once liquidity pools are deployed, gin will have a secondary market price. You'll be able to barter or gift Jin to other players using the blockchain as well by transferring it out uh, to their wallets. Um, at the moment, though, we have not yet rolled out the um, um, the possibility of Jin being moved from the game to the blockchain. The reason we have uh, put that on hold is because we're still in the early access version. We're still analyzing data, um, you know, and, and we want to ensure there are no kind of exploits for users to um accumulate gin in ridiculous manners and then you know kind of bridging those onto the blockchain so yeah that's the beauty of web free right you can move your gaming assets around um gifting them trading them and so on next question would we consider as a perk for diamonds a bag of thirty thousand gin for each penguin owned at uh, a time of snapshot uh, I can understand why this question was asked because breeding will require gin and thirty thousand gin in fact um, but you know, at the moment, we are in the midst of introducing more use cases for Jin, um, especially within the game. So it's unlikely that we'll be giving all diamonds free Jin as an airdrop. Um, and we also want to kind of maintain a healthy balance between uh, the demand supply, or rather the input and the output of Jin in the in the blockchain. But diamonds have a special place in our hearts, so there are more perks on the way. Uh, next question, any estimate on when liquidity pool will be added to Jin? The answer is we don't have this information uh, for now. Uh, the focus for us is to roll out games that are fun to play and not just cater for players who are simply uh, on the lookout for games that are play to earn because that model is not sustainable. Next question, um, I would like to know the tokenomics for Jin. Uh, this was asked by user. So the answer is uh, the idea is about balancing the demand and supply, like I said earlier. Uh, and we have in-game economists to ensure that Jin will be a desirable currency in all games we launch. In fact, you know, it is the premium in-game currency uh, for Gate of Abyss. So uh, Jin bridged from the blockchain to our games, for example. Uh, that Jin is burnt, it's removed totally from the blockchain. So these are, these are some examples of how we can balance the uh, input versus output of Jin. Next question, how will the crypto aspect be tax regulated in individual countries, especially regarding the gin that one earns in game and wants to cash out? And could we create guides considering uh, taxes or other wrong taxation rules? Um, for this, I would like to advise you to speak to a tax consultant or an accountant if you have one, or you know, ask friends or do some research because policies vary from country to country. It would not be fair for us to give you advice. And these policies could be updated anyway, so it's best you'll be kept updated with your local um, yeah, guidelines. Um, now we'll go on to questions around the company at large, or um, just in general. Um, first question is how large or how many people are employed in the Tipsy company? You know, everyone from designers and programmers to crypto and marketing. The answer is, um, so we have eight advisors, and including that, you know, we kind of have around 60 people in the world. Uh, so teams are based in Singapore, Vietnam, Philippines, Pakistan, uh, the US, and Australia. Uh, pretty global. Next question, will penguins and land plots be important for future games too? Um, the answer is yes, they will. Uh, next question, any plans on updating the roadmap? Uh, answer is yes, we do. We have some interesting surprises lined up for beyond what's illustrated in our current roadmap. Uh, so stay tuned. Next question. Is there any plan to introduce game users into our ecosystem? You know, for example, to show them 
uh, explain to them about Jane, show them Tipsy, its, it's utility, and uh, also our various NFT collections. Uh, the answer to that is our approach is to win the hearts of gamers and to showcase how blockchain can add value to the world of gaming. So we are doing this gradually. Uh, you will notice that the elements of our ecosystem are actually being pieced together. You're able to kind of join the dots, you know, the relationship between Dipsy and Jin, for instance, um, between LAN and the Gate of Abyss, you know, with, with uh, increased drop rates for now and in future with uh, percentage of transactions. You can also see how penguins are used within the game. So we want to win the hearts of, of players and, you know, as they come and join our community, they interact with fellow players, they realize that um, this gaming universe is actually a lot more than uh, what meets the eye. So take, for example, in the case of Jin, right? Uh, players who toy around in our Goa app, uh, they would notice how they can bridge the Jin from the blockchain to the game because we have that option. It will pick their interest. And if you notice um, in, the, in the short brief within the Goa app website on Jin, um, you uh, have a link to the Tipsy app, which is our staking site. So that would bring players there and they can read up a bit more about Tipsy coin. They can buy Tipsy, they can stick it for Jin and so on. Um, so that's kind of, kind of how everything works together. Um, next question is, um, hello, and when is the whole thing available in German? It is very exhausting to translate everything. Uh, so yes, uh, thanks for asking this. I mean, um, we will be localizing Gate of Abyss. So, you know, we're talking about rolling it out in different languages. Uh, once we are ready to garner mass adoption, we'll do this. It kind of goes hand in hand with our marketing campaigns. Uh, at, at the moment, we are focused on refining the game, you know, rectifying bugs from the feedback we've got, uh, adding new features and so on. So that covers all the questions that we wanted to kind of dive in. Uh, if there's anything else, um, you guys are always free to tag myself uh, or Dapers in the chats. Uh, I usually interact with the community a bit more. Uh, Depress, my awesome co-founder, is um, usually a bit more involved with operations. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in. I mean, this marks the end of our AMA session. Uh, thanks to all who asked questions and for all those who um, kind of, you know, join in um, to this recording today. It's nice to see people come together, you know, play with fellow friends and so on. It gives us a lot of joy. So thank you and um, see you guys around in this call or in the game.